Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And this is kind of the setup video to the actual wolf ball game. You will watch the game first. Uh, that day is May 28th. Of course, once I film it, it'll take me several days to get that edited and get it out. Today's May 6th. So that will give you an idea how long it takes me to get all this set up uh, for one day. Uh, for one one big game, the opening day game, and uh, it's just it's a lot of work behind the scenes, and that's kind of what this video is going to be about. It's probably going to be a really long video because I'm going to show you every single thing all in one one take and not bust it up in different videos. So uh, I don't want to mow today, to be honest with you, but the bluegrass is a little bit shaggy. Uh, the reason I don't want to mow is because it's wet. I typically don't like doing that, uh, but uh, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you got to do what you don't like to do, but you do it anyway. And um, it's supposed to rain quite a bit tonight, and then we've got a chance to rain tomorrow, and then Sunday as well. So uh, if I don't get this mowed, it's really going to get out of hand. So this mow might be a little bit ugly. Uh, just because the ground's a little bit wet, <clears throat> but it's really not about the mowing. It's about how I set all this up and how I lay the field out and all that. So let's let's jump right in. So this is like a big hitting mat. It's got like a batter's box built into it, that kind of thing. Huh. There we go. The whole reason for this is so uh, we don't tear the grass up, you know, from, from our feet from hitting. And it'll only be on the grass a couple of hours, so it's not going to do any damage. But much safer than feet and shoes digging into my turf. And it looks pretty cool. Now this, oh boy do I love this right here. This is a little uh, track, uh, Espanol and English that come in. The uh, thing here, you will never be good enough to go to heaven. Being a good person is not the answer. How true is that? Holy cow, how true is that? The Bible says that we all have sinned and fall short of, of God's glory. And obviously our sin condemns us to eternity in hell, separation from God. And it goes on to quote Romans, for the wages of sin is death, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, <clears throat> it goes in to uh, the plan of salvation. If we confess and believe we'll be saved. It's all kind of good stuff in here. This is so cool that this company, uh, let me see what the company name is. Premium Pro Turf. Looks like they're in Dalton, Georgia. I got this thing off Amazon, so I don't, I, mean, I don't know if that's uh, Amazon in Dalton, Georgia. I don't know if it's Premium Pro Turf is in Georgia. But anyway, uh, Premium Pro Turf, thank you so much for using uh, your, your company as a ministry. Uh, for Jesus. That is absolutely off the hook. I love it. Wow, this thing is really nice quality too. It's really nice and thick. And yes, I had originally said home plate was going to be up in that corner and we and that would you know, the tree line over there would be the left field line but uh, after hitting those balls i didn't want to me or the kids be hitting them over in the neighbor's yard like crazy and have to go get them the majority of the players are right-handed batters and are going to hit the ball to left field center field left field so by moving home plate back here that puts my yard the left field home run 
of course I've got this light pole right here that's kind of in the way but this big batter's box thing is going to actually help me get set up to where maybe that won't interfere with a left-handed batter So I think that's good. I don't think that's gonna bother anybody hitting left-handed. Certainly it's not gonna be in the, the baseline in any way. So everything revolves around the back point of home plate. Everything, everything that happens out here, the center focus point, starting point, is the point behind home plate. And obviously, uh, I want to look down this line right here. That's where your baselines uh, are built off of or created off of. So I'm just kind of getting a visual to make sure it's clear down there. The, the only thing that really stinks about this is that building <laughs> sitting right behind second base. But I mean, I'm just not going to move my building to have a wolf ball field. That would make no sense to me. So. It is what it is and we will deal with it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, nail down the four corners so that it doesn't move anywhere. And I've got these uh, little small, uh, I think they're, I don't know what kind of nails they are, but I got them at Lowe's. So those four corners are nailed down. I'm gonna come right here at the point of uh, the back home plate and put me another nail in. That's where I can pull my string off of. And I got these big old chunky nails. Uh, they come from Lowe's, but I don't know what they're used for, but uh, they work good to hold this string in the ground. So just a little simple loop knot. Stick me a nail through there to use it uh, to pull and I'm gonna create my third base line. Man, I'm telling you, I really wish I could put home plate in a different spot, but I just can't see my line down through there and see how much of the field I'm wasting. Uh, like foul territory I guess but I can't slide the mat back anymore because this stinking uh, light pole was in the way so I've got it lined up right there and it actually when I line it up with the you know the back of the home plate on that angle it actually ain't too awful bad uh, it ain't as bad as it was uh, as I was originally thinking so let's do first baseline and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so you can get a good look at it now down third base. And there's first base. Ah! Man, it takes away a lot of the field. Man, look. See the line going down through there? Look at all that space between the line and the trees. There's a good 15 to 18 feet right there that I'm not going to be using. Ah, that stinks. So I think I'm going to take this and drag it down there to my original spot and look at it. See what I see how much different it's going to look and then possibly trying to get with my neighbors and give them a, a heads up that we're gonna be playing wolf of ball. Uh, the neighbor in the corner, I'm not really worried about, it's the one over there with the wood fence that you see me mow beside all the time. 
and they're, they're they're super nice folks i don't i don't think they would mind i really don't um i've got more i've got a lot of balls like uh no, not that kind of balls uh wolf of balls I mean, it's not like if, if somebody hits a home run over there then if somebody hits a home run over there we're not gonna have to just go get it immediately <clears throat> i can just get another ball and continue to play and then maybe go over there at one time and get them out so um i i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna reroute things and go back to my original idea and lay the field out that way and see what happens I'm telling you this right here is considerably better night and day better that that's one of the reasons i've been trying to fix that bad spot right there because that's right in the third baseline but i don't care about that as much as i care about ticking a neighbor off let's start over and let's do the field this way or let, let's set the field up this way holy cow how much better is that look at the little to no wasted foul space and you swing over here and the foul line kind of bleeds over into the pine needles all the way down there at the fence so this uh boy i like this a lot better let's roll with it be decisive and go with it all right so next thing i need to do see how everything plays off this one point right here next thing i need to do is find center field So home plate is 17 inches wide, so what's that, eight and a half is the center. So I'm gonna come right here, I got me a little Allen head. I'm just gonna lay right here in the center to mark it. Double check, this is a very, very important measurement. That is spot on. I'm also gonna lay me a nail right there in line with that. That way when I go to moving this, it don't the nail won't move any. Let's double check it. Eight and a half. So now I'm gonna pull it to center field and we'll know where the center field's at. All right, I'm gonna double check my measurement one more time. I am dead on eight and a half. So we'll leave that as is. I know some of you who are non-perfectionist you might think this is overkill and i respect that but it's not to me when these kids walk on this field i want them to feel like they're in a major league ballpark no it's not a major league ballpark i'm no dummy i know that but if i can create an atmosphere like that by the way the field looks and it mimics a major league baseball park that'll be good enough for me um, I think when the kids walk out here and see it, they're going to be just in awe or in shock or be like, holy cow, look at this guy's yard. That, that's the whole reason behind it is to see the kids' face light up and just so they have a good time out here and they, they feel like somebody, you know, that this dude that maybe don't even know him done all this work so they can come play on his yard and, and have a good time playing ball and feel like their own some type of a high-end ballpark field so you know my, my OCD and my uh, perfectionist bone is in high gear right now really kicking in gear so one of my favorite striping patterns is that right there and of course I've never had the opportunity to do that in a yard because the yard just didn't really set up for it so we will uh, lay out the lines and of course I'm gonna have to lay this out with string uh, so that they're dead spot on. You can see center field, uh, the first stripe goes, it kind of goes through the pitcher's mound, but I'm gonna actually do the mine a little bit different. I'm gonna split it and have a white stripe on the right and a uh, dark stripe on the left and then follow suit after that. All right, so you can see I've got that all pulling off one point as it goes out it creates that starburst okay so that fast to change my mind i think i do want the center stripe just like the one in the picture kind of you know go along the outside of the pitcher's mound on both sides 
and that'll be my first big color uh, I don't know we'll pick a light stripe or dark whatever then the next one will be light the next one will be dark so there'll be two big stripes on either side of the pitcher's mound one big stripe in the middle and I'll match it up over on the left side so let me get some measurements and make sure this is all spot on and I'll show you what it looks like so I got you sitting dead behind home plate now and you should be able to see it a little better I removed that line that notes center field uh, I left my nail out there for reference but you can see now the pitcher's mound will be about halfway between here and second base I actually put the bases out there to help me uh, visualize this now you can see there's one big stripe going in the middle so we'll, we'll say that's light and then a dark and then a light and then if that one's light this one will be dark and then a light Whoop. oh hang on i got too many strings out i got one too many strings out on this side let me fix that all right now we are right so i got the one big stripe going right down the middle and you can see right here's the second stripe and here's the third stripe one big going one big one going down the middle second stripe third stripe so this should be good i'm gonna double check measurements on the outside and yeah it would be nice if the sun was out and the weather was cooperating so you could see the stripes really good go down for the first time but it is what it is i gotta get it done uh just to give you a heads up i'm gonna kind of time lapse all this so it's super quick and fast that way you don't have to watch two hours of mowing i'm going to uh mow the outline of the stripe first that way i'll know what which way the stripe's going and then i'll pull all the lines up and then just mow all the inside portion of each stripe and then I'll just mow that pattern until game day. Uh, I've got a few other little things I'm gonna show you later on. Uh, you saw the infield was painted brown, so it looked like dirt. And the mound was painted brown, so it looked like dirt. And in, in front of home plate, I'm actually gonna mow, finish out the circle of home plate. And then the, the, the starburst stripes will start at that circle. I'm going to actually do these outside lines. They'll just kind of go straight. Let me go get the mower, outline this, and then we'll pull all the strings up and hopefully get done before this rain comes. say I would like to be efficient while working that doesn't necessarily mean work faster or harder it actually means work smarter not harder these are 12 inch nails you get from Lowe's and anytime I use masonry string or something like that and I have to cut it from the original roll but I want to keep it and reuse it this is how I do it and store it and collect it really quickly just get you a few runs started around the end like that put your drill in reverse nice and neat ready to go for the next time got me I mean it didn't really get me but I finished up right as it started raining and I think it looks pretty cool so far you can kind of see a couple of the big stripes right there 
that's actually the center line going down through there, the dead center of the field. Now, after looking at it, these big wide uh, stripes, this is kind of where the creativity starts. I mean, the whole thing is using creativity, okay? That's kind of the whole reason I'm showing you this is to try and help get your creative juices flowing in your yard as far as stripes go and you know dreaming up things and stuff like that and then making it happen on the turf and you're basically painting a picture on the grass and you get to figure out what you want the picture to look like and of course yeah I saw it on uh, another picture on a ball field and I'm replicating what they're doing but I think you get the idea you know you can do any kind of design you want to do uh oh it's supposed to get nasty here today like really really nasty they actually let my kids out of school early it's supposed to get that rough uh, in the next couple of hours so uh, I'm gonna wrap this portion of the video up and when we pick back up filming We'll start back on this and get her done. So here we are uh, on a Wednesday and uh, game day Saturday. So I'm going to take today, Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday and get everything done, get the mowing done, get it cleaned up, edged out, get the lines put in, bases put in, my big logo is going right here and um, hopefully things will be great for saturday it is a little bit of a bummer i'm not gonna lie to you uh, i've been prepping for this and getting ready for this for uh two months now and it's rained all week the ground is super wet right now the grass is wet and they're calling for rain friday so when i get everything done between today and tomorrow i might have to actually go to the shop and get some really big tarps and tarp the logo and tarp the infield and all that because i just don't want all that hard work and the money i've spent i've spent quite a bit of money on paint and equipment to do all that and a um uh what do you call those things a template stencil uh, i bought a uh, had a stencil made from world-class paints just for the logo, so I've got quite a bit of money invested in this. I just don't want it to wash away in the rain. So it's just unfortunate that it's supposed to rain Friday and like, you know, thunderstorms. And then Saturday, game day is supposed to be really nice. So um, I, I'm, I'm not the guy that lets anything stop me. I'm, I'm not that guy. If, if there's something I set my mind to, there's something I want to do, I don't care what gets in my way. I push right through it and I get the job done. That's the way I've always been, probably the way I'll always be. I just, I don't, I don't, when, I, when I'm set on something, when I'm set on doing something, I just don't take no for an answer. Whether that be from the elements or from people or whatever, if, if, if and obviously I'm keeping this within the context of grass, you know what I'm saying? When things don't go just right, uh, I just kind of step up my game and, and I get it done regardless. So, so I'm gonna get out here and mow, and of course I'll take a little bit of footage of it here and there and show that to you. But mainly, uh, the rest of the video will be about the prep work on the actual field, laying it out and all that. And of course I got the Vendrack real mower with me today. I'm gonna go over it with the Alec first and bag the clippings simply because I still do have a little bit of poa annual here and there. When I look out across here, I see maybe 20 poa plants. And I can see them real easy. They're light green. They got the little seed head on them. And uh, so, so I'm just gonna bag the clippings that one collect those seed heads. And then I'm gonna go back over it for with the Ventrac reel mower. Uh, when you see the actual game day video, I doubt I'm gonna have like a lot of mowing involved in that because I want the focus to be on the finished product of the field and more importantly I want the focus to be on the kids. And I want people to watch them have a good time. I want I want people to see their faces light up and um, so I'm, I'm just not gonna include a lot of the mowing in that video. Uh, you've seen me mow a hundred times already so you know how I mow and that kind of thing but 
it's, it's this day's about the kids and getting it set up for them. We've even got the uh, Kona ice truck coming uh, to serve uh, like the little shaved ice, colored flavored shaved ice. So that's gonna be really cool too. And of course on top of all that, it's a birthday party. It's my son Jax, he, he's turning 11. Uh, very thankful and um, phew, 11 years old. Now I'm telling you, to see him be 11 years old after what doctors told us that might happen with him, I'm telling you, man, God's so good. He is absolutely so good that we're able to celebrate an 11th birthday of a human being that has almost died and may have not ever walked so uh, sorry <clears throat> sorry every time i talk about my son especially around birthdays it just kind of gets to me because I've, I've seen god's goodness firsthand you know a lot of people don't get to witness that you know you hear people say hey god's good and yeah we know he is but they just never see it with their own eyes i have witnessed his mercy and his goodness firsthand with these two eyes right here through my son and uh that, that just that gets me sometimes so i'm gonna start mowing and uh we'll, we'll get going get the day started and um see what happens You have no idea at the level of patience I've had to uh, have. I, we bought our second Ventrac about a month ago. And uh, you know, I've got the real mower for it that we bought to mow athletic fields. Of course that was pre-COVID. And then all the athletic fields changed their minds. So I was stuck with real mower and I, I guess kept it. Uh, thinking I might need it in the future. You have just no idea how patient I've had to make myself be to not bring that Ventrac out here and mow with it. I'm telling you, I was about to die to bring that thing out here and use it, but I, I didn't want to get a blade of grass on it before the video. So uh, uh, I'm done with this thing. So I'm gonna pull the uh, Ventrac out here and go over it again with that and um, the main reason I'm double cutting it with a Ventrac, this is set at an inch. That's set at 0.986. So, I mean, it's just gonna barely be skimming the grass. But I feel like I'll get a more solid, even stripe with that big wide deck. And um, just, just because of the way you have to mow this sunburst pattern, uh, you know, you got some lines that look like they're going this way and some lines that look like they're going that way And I'm just I'm super peculiar about that stuff So I want to mow it and try to clean the lines up. It's really the only reason I'm doing it to be completely honest with you Now I will say once the Poa annual uh, Has kind of checked up man. We're almost in June and I still got some Poa out here. It's crazy how long this stuff hangs around this year but once all that's gone, there's no fear of seed heads, then I'll probably do quite a bit more mowing with the Ventrac real mower out here. I mean, simply because it's a bigger mower, I can get done a lot quicker, no other reason.
so there's a little bit of sun finally coming out and i don't know what you think but i think the field looks absolutely spectacular this is absolutely insane what this bluegrass will do from a striping perspective it's absolutely insane i i'm in, in love with it i can't say nothing else with that so i'm gonna go to the shop and take the ventrac back uh, uh unload the grass clippings from the truck collected uh uh seven of the allet catcher fools so what a terrible lot i mean seven i don't know that's quite a bit but anyway it's done it's mowed uh, won't get mowed again until si probably sunday after church or either monday and uh, of course we'll play the game on it in three days i don't it'll grow a little bit but i'm not too much worried about it my focus is to get the field laid out now and get all that ready so i gotta get back to the shop get all my painting equipment get my stencil and get all the paint and i'll be back and we'll do that you know i had to get some of them action shots like really close up to the reel i like that kind of camera work where it kind of you know zooms around the piece of equipment and goes in and out on it and slow motion fast motion all that and of course i can't drive the machine and do that same times so i got my daughter to get on it and help me out with that and, um that's one of the things that, about making videos and all uh that i just really really like a lot is being creative and coming up with the different action shots and things like that so pretty cool stuff um <coughs> someone just passed us on a neighborhood and he thought we were trying to make a conversation but we were not all we were trying to do was be nice. It was very awkward. Elijah. Ding dong. I'll be doing some ASMR today. This time I'm doing it with uh, Doritos. Cool Ranch wow. Doritos. They're perfectly squared off with each other. Now you know how to do that. If you ever have to build a ball field in life, now you know how to do it. If you don't work on rolling, well, yeah, you have to be gone. How would that work on rolling? You can't walk that fast, do you? Work smarter, not harder. Bases are done. Don't touch that base. Do not touch it. I said, don't touch it. The stencil in the truck overlays some of this. This, this. this is just the outline. It's like a quit and aqua plan for you hit this thing. I ain't worried about the turf. You mess this stencil up, I'll crack your head. Oh. Pull that out. Pull that pull out, out there. Leah, pull, pull it out, out. dummy. Alright, Leah, grab the center and fold it out. Easily. We're going slow. I don't want to tear it We're up. We're going slow, guys. Grab that, fold it out. Yeah, yeah actually go slow. Bro, it's gonna be. I can't reach it. Here, you get that. Can I move up on it? Alright. Now Eli grabbed it and pull it up this way. Uh, actually, um, oh my God. actually, it's got to spin around. Uh, no. No, it doesn't. It's the right way. It's huge. Um, actually, it's got to go this way. Come on, follow me. Follow my lead. <laughs> I always lead. Don't mess with the purpose. All right, right about, uh-uh-uh. Keep going this way. Right about there. Now, Eli, grab the top one. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh my god. 
Holy cow, that is so tight! Dang, boy! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up? Who's your daddy now? Oh. <laughs> Grab that corner. I you, paint you're going to come up that way a little bit. Up right about there. I'm a little confused too. Is it just going to be an outline of it? It's, it's the out. It's a stencil. Oh, right there. Now pull, pull that corner tight that way. At least pull that corner out. Oh, now we're cooking. That's good. That's, that's more like squared up. Mm. Isn't it? You see, you see, it's just the lines of it. Mm -hmm. and you just paint the lines, and then you go back in between it and fill it all in. That is insane, the details. They even got the batter's boxes cut out. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right, well, there's the logo, Blue Dreams Field. And uh, I'll do a video all on its own about the logo and tell you the story and the meaning behind the logo, how it was designed, uh, how we come up with it. Uh, it was a two or three week process of going back and forth with Neil who helped me uh, design this. Um, I'll, I'll do a totally completely separate video just on the logo because uh, it's, it's going to take me a while to explain all this out and the meaning and uh, so you can understand well, wh wh what made us come up with this logo and the name and so forth. So I will be a little bit honest with you. I am terrified right now, scared to death because um, I've never done this before. I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. I'm more, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on stencil work and how they do it. And um, first time I've ever used that kind of a spray painter, a paint sprayer. Uh, first time I've ever done this, so it's literally the first time. Uh, and I'm just, I just don't want to screw it up. So we're gonna see what happens. So basically, the stencil is an outline, and uh, there are little tiny squares cut and you outline that in the particular color uh, that goes along with whatever it is you're painting. And then you let it dry, then you remove the stencil, and then you go back in and fill in all in between it. So I gotta look at the logo <laughs> and see what colors go where, and uh, we'll get with it. I'm honestly putting it off because I'm, I'm terrified of this right here. But uh, I, I think it'll be all right. I, I just, because once you paint it, I mean you've been painted it, you know what I'm saying? So I don't wanna I don't wanna jack nothing up. Well I ain't gonna tell you right now. I ordered way, way too much paint. I got I got way too much paint. <laughs> so uh, after looking at this you could you can literally do this particular layout with aerosol cans like like that and i bought it in gallons dummy 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 me so uh, i guess i should have researched it a little bit better i i got paint for days now you know what i'm saying Paint. 
That's so stinking cool. I learned a big, big lesson right here with this. I honestly don't, uh, for this logo, I don't even think I needed this thing. Golly. And it's too late. I mean, I got everything in gallons or five gallon pails now. I probably should have researched that a little bit more. And uh, I could have literally, I could have done all that with aerosol. And it had been considerably cheaper, way cheaper. So live and learn, I reckon, doggone it. I don't even know how you turn this thing on. Mm. Surely it's got a power button on it somewhere. High spray, low spray, and then this roller. But where's the, uh, see, unlock. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, there's nothing in there. <laughs> oh. Well, where's the stinking power button at? I reckon, um... I reckon I need to go get the directions and read them, right? Ha! Ah, there it is. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let me uh, mix up my paint and uh, put that in there and we'll be good to go. So, first time ever using a paint gun like this. Oh, crap. I just drug it through the paint. Huh. That probably wasn't good. Let me go get a paper towel, clean that up before I make a mess. All right, so keep the hose out of the paint. There's your tip. Man, I'm telling you, those little thin lines, I really wish I'd have got the aerosol because this I got the pressure down as low as this thing will go and it's a little too much pressure and I guarantee you next time I do this if I ever do it again I'll be considerably neater because learning lesson you know what I'm saying you learn as you go All right, so the paint is not 100% dry, but I'm on a time schedule here. Uh, I'm kind of under the gun. I only got one day to complete all this, complete the whole field before it rains Friday. And again, the game's Saturday. I'm going to attempt to remove this and it's still got some wet paint on it. And we just have to take a chance. I mean, I, I really don't have no choice to be honest with you. pretty tight uh, tomorrow when I got the kids here to help me I'll uh, lay that uh, the the stencil back out let it dry will probably dry tomorrow but I'll lay it out and we'll fold it up nice and neat and put it up and that way we'll have it for next time we pull this stunt so we can go ahead and do the uh, blue we're gonna do the blue behind the flag and then we're gonna finish up the brown infield and um, probably going to have to get me some cardboard from the shop tomorrow for the white lines and stuff to really keep the lines nice and straight. Matter of fact, I'm going to probably need a lot of cardboard on this to keep a lot of the lines straight. 
Some of you newer folks may not have uh, remembered this, but I done a big old USA flag and uh, in my yard one year for July 4th. I remembered I bought a bunch of red, white, and blue aerosol cans from World Class Paint. I didn't use it all, so I'm gonna. Oh, so I'm telling you, boy, this is gonna make the job a lot easier. Spray paint will work. I think that can's jacked up. Let me say this. I think one of my problems here is I am a overly anal super perfectionist when it comes to detail stuff like this i'm just I, i'm just ocd like that can't help it the way god made me and from a distance you're not going to see any little teeny tiny imperfection that i'm seeing right here with my eyes uh, but still i'm trying to get it as perfect as i can get it but nevertheless i really don't have to get it quite so perfect if you know what i'm saying because you're going to be seeing it at a distance and you won't you won't see any of the imperfections in it you'll just see a big old logo if that makes sense Tell you what let's do let's go ahead and uh try to get this brown done so i can put the paint bucket up and all that before it gets dark and then i can cut the lights on if i need to and do the uh wording out here in the center field this actually ain't too bad uh, this thing is so incredibly precise with spraying if you feather the trigger on it it ain't it ain't bad at all it ain't nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be Dude, that is so cool. Now let's do the bass lines. This might be a little tricky, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah. This started off as a 10 by 10 and ended up being a 20 by 20. You know something I just realized I didn't do? I didn't put the pitcher's mound. Doggone it. Ah. 
Oh my goodness, that's gonna kill me knowing that's not done. I'll uh, I'll figure something out by tomorrow. I don't think that's too bad for my first time. I think it looks pretty good. You know what, this thing is so fine on how it paints this little aerosol can. I don't even think I need this cardboard anymore to be honest with you. All right, so I need to move the camera, get like a super close, tight shot, because you'll see this in the actual game day video is like prep work for uh, for the field. And I'll kind of talk you through my thought process on this. You won't, uh, I, you know, obviously you won't hear me talking in the video. I'll have some music or something playing over it, but you'll see all this. And, and my idea of doing it this way is kind of teasing a little bit. You know, kind of giving you a little tiny hint of what's getting ready to come when I uh, do like a big flyover and show you the, the logo for the first time. And you'll kind of see little bits and pieces of this and me painting the logo. And actually my thought process for the very beginning opening clip of the video is going to be nothing but sound uh you know kind of real quiet and you can hear all the the machines working and the the cans working spray cans working and all that oh shoot that thing's on Play ball. you're serious dead serious <laughs> Could be sanctioned. Well, I'm waiting on the Red Sox to hire me. And of course, when I'm sitting down doing the actual editing, who knows, man, my mind just, the creativity just runs wild when I'm doing videos like this. And I honestly can't tell you what it's gonna look like when I'm done with it. So, very, very long day today. I'm gonna clean up my mess, go get me a bite to eat, hang out with my family, chill out, get in the bed, get up again tomorrow and get all this finished and then by tomorrow evening I'll need to get everything uh, look at that <laughs> by tomorrow evening I'll need to get everything in line to cover all this up for Friday in case it rains um, I'm going to tell you now I was going to paint the entire brown of the infield like where the dirt would actually be I am going to paint the pitcher's mound I've got a real deal pitcher's rubber I'm going to put in the middle of it. And I was going to paint all of the infield, but I, just, I don't think I'm going to have time, to be completely honest with you. So we'll probably not do that. And again, tomorrow when I wake up, if I feel good, I might do it anyway. So uh, I'm going to call it a day, and uh, we'll get back out here tomorrow and do some more work. Oh. What you think, dog? So how much you got left to do? Come here and look at it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? With riding all that stuff? Huh? 
Is it dried? No, you can't walk on it yet. Well, like get like smudged and all. Yeah, it'll smudge. But I got I gotta do like um, yeah, I gotta do like the little details around the edge and that kind of thing. It looks kind of like like the uh, like projectors, like in at football fields or yeah. something like that. Well, did it's like you? A projector. I, the cool thing is the same company that. You know, like when you watch baseball on TV yeah. and football and you see that big logo on the field, the same company that does the, that for the football teams did this. Wait, you hired them? No, I didn't hire them, you goofball. I did it myself. I've been out here working on it. No, see that big white thing? Yeah. You lay that out. Let, like, let drop some like, rain And it's a, it's a stencil. Like, uh, make sure it don't get like... Rain yeah, well, I have to cover it up uh, before the rain Saturday. But, dude, this is going to be the best birthday party ever, ain't it? Mm -hmm. It's going to be cool. It ain't going to be up in like, a few days. Huh? It, it's only going to be a few days since it'll be. Yeah, I know. Your birthday is Saturday. So. Well, no, my birthday party. My yeah, birthday is Friday. Yes, your birthday is Friday. That's which two you, days. Your birthday party is Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Not my birthday. It ain't All right. Twitch. Well, I'll be in there in a second. Well, good morning, and back out here, I've actually, I've been out here working. I forgot to go get the camera. Lord have mercy, don't forget the camera. Uh, the white right there at home plate and the baselines, I went ahead and got those done and finished. I woke up this morning, and I said, you know what? Let's put a second one over in right field. So yeah, that's, you just never know what you're gonna get with me. I mean, I'm a, a lot of the times I'm a spur of the moment kind of guy. So we're gonna have a second logo in right field. And yes, I've measured off the baseline. I'm six uh, paces off first baseline and uh, 10 paces off of the, uh, the baseline from first to second. Of course, I matched that up over here. So I'm 10 paces from there to here and then six paces from this left corner over here so it should be pretty symmetrical when you're looking at it on the camera and again you know if it's an inch off you're not going to be able to look at the camera and tell uh, from drone shots and that kind of thing but it's incredibly close so now uh, I've got the black out and I don't have spray paint in the air, uh, little ch -ch -ch aerosol can I've got to use the gun and this is probably going to be a little bit more tedious so uh, we'll see how this goes let's get at it well it's actually not too bad with this thing as long as you got a good steady hand huh. yeah that's pretty cool So I figured it out right there. I think the trick is not to, you know, ch 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 not to do it individually, but, but get yourself set up and make one continuous line. It actually works a lot better and it's considerably faster. So this is 40 feet, yeah, I like 40 foot for the pitcher's mound, 75 inches, 75 inches, so that's dead center, and uh, I'm going to paint the pitcher's mound right here, and I get one shot at this, <laughs> one shot, I don't want to mess it up. All right, we're going to use the old string trick here. Line this string up. Now I'll actually save all these strings so if I ever do this again, which I'm sure I will, 
I'll have all the strings already cut for it. <laughs> that worked out good. That's cool. I'm gonna go get my extension, and that way I ain't gotta bend over when I paint all this in. We'll probably let that dry and then uh, probably put a second coat on it. Nah, I'm not. I'm just going to touch it up and be done with it. What it is is where the grass blades are laid one way. It's kind of hard to get the paint up under there. So that's why I'm kind of going over it a bunch of times because depending on the angle you look at it, it may not look as dark and full. All right, I think that looks pretty good. We'll roll with it. Of course, I got the pitching rubber. I won't put in there until uh, Saturday morning. All right, so here we are on the bats and it's a different color brown, a little bit lighter tone brown. Uh, at first the logo, the bat was the same color as the infield dirt and then we changed it to make it kind of look more like a natural wood Louisville slugger bat, that light brown color. Really, really glad we did because the contrast is really cool. And I'm really getting the hang of this gun now. I'm not even using the cardboard anymore. Uh, after using this, I know what I said earlier in the video, but after using this gun and getting down here on top of it, uh, this actually might be the better way, especially for the bigger areas. Of course, the little detail, I think the uh, aerosol cans are still the best, but I like this gun for the bigger areas. If I do get a little touch on the black like I did right there, I you know, already decided I was going to outline it one more time with black just to kind of clean everything up. And of course I'll have to be super detailed doing that. Because once, once I do the black, I won't, I won't, that'll be the last step. Yep, there you go. Now I need to put the uh, stars on the blue and put the flames in the blue dreams. And uh, I got the GCI logo. It's gonna go on the end of the bat like a Louisville slugger. And uh, she'll be done. She'll be ready to go. Just like that. But there's supposed to be a pitcher's mound in the middle. And I did not put it on there. I guess I got happy and went right over it with the stripes. Um, I got to think about that. If I'm going to go back through the trouble to put the brown back in the paint sprayer. And just I can, I'll have to eyeball that pitcher's mound. So, uh, ah. Don't you hate it when that happens? But let's get the uh, stars lined up right and get them painted in. All 
All right, I'm gonna give that two or three minutes to dry and then I'm gonna hit it one more time. All right, let's do a second coat right here. Boy, that's gonna look good. And we wanna be gentle taking this up. There we go. Woohoo! Now you see in the bottom right corner where there are no stars, that's where the pitcher's mound is going to go, so it eat up that star in the bottom corner. So we're coming down to the wire, it's 2.30, and I've been out here since about, I don't know, 6.30 or so, and I haven't had anything to eat, haven't took a lunch yet. Uh, I just got one thing on my mind, is to finish this and get it done, and get a tarp over it, because it is supposed to rain tonight. It needs a little bit of time to dry so that you know the paint don't stick to the bottom of the tarp so uh, kind of in high gear right now getting it done all right so i think that's about right you didn't think i was going to do this and not put any tar hill blue in there did you we'll tell you what's amazing to me is the tolerance on this thing it i mean it fits it like a champion they obviously cut it with some type of a laser machine or something like that because the, the tolerance on it, I mean, it fits it to a T perfectly. Nozzle got stopped up. That right there is really, really, really cool. I like that. You can see their flames. Of course, I'll talk about all this when we do the actual logo video and what the logo means and, you know, why we did this and why we did that. I'll go over all that uh, in another video. So I'm about to kind of eyeball the pitcher's mound. I did the other logo first to kind of give me a good uh, idea of what it, you know, it needs to look like. So here goes nothing. And there's the pitching rubber. That worked out pretty good. Obviously one of my favorite parts of the logo, my logo. If you noticed when I painted the brown or was doing the outline of black, I had a couple of black lines inside this bat. That was so I could line up this logo. It's actually more dark brown. It must be a little bit of brown paint still in here mixed with the black. Ha <laughs> ha! Boy, that's tight right there. I consider that a job well done. I am uh, beyond pleased with this. Saturday morning, it's supposed to be bright and sunny. So I'll be sure to get plenty of drone shots all up until the actual uh, time of the game, which is four o'clock Saturday. Jax's birthday party is uh, before then. And we got all kind of people coming for the actual game. But the sun comes up behind home plate. 
So I'll get up early and catch those early drone shots and you'll be able to see the starburst pattern like really, really good. And uh, actually as the sun gets over here toward the, uh, let's see, north, south, till it gets over here to the south, that's when it'll, it'll really light up then. So I'll be sure to get plenty of drone footage of it to show it from the sky. And uh, I'm hungry. I'm ready, ready, to get, ready to eat me something. Uh, but I still am not done. Uh, this is water-based paint. Uh, yeah, water-based paint. So all my stenciling and, and that kind of thing, I'm gonna go back down to fescue and wash all that paint off and just wash it into the grass. It's completely safe and environmentally friendly and all that kind of jazz. It's all over the can. So uh, it's safe to do that. And then that'll be it. Uh, we'll come back out here Friday. No, we'll come back out here Saturday morning and uh, I'll lay the bases out and I'll show all that. And um, I, I just wanted to take a, one video. I don't think I've ever done this. You always see the end result of something, you know, something I do. and. I don't think I've ever had one video where when it takes me multiple days to put together just one six or eight ten minute video I don't think I've ever showed the process behind it all and of course this is a little unique this is a ball field I'm essentially making uh, but I'm talking about everything I just I don't think I've ever showed that process so the again this video is gonna be super long but uh, for those of you that want to watch the detail behind it and see all the little intricacies behind every little thing that I do and a lot of the stuff I do in all my videos is just you don't see a lot of it behind the scenes because I, I, you know, I don't like to bore you to death with an hour long video every time I post one. This will give those of you a chance that want to see those little tiny details you can watch the whole thing start to finish and heck it may even encourage somebody to tr attempt this you know to, to make a ball field for their kids or for their neighborhood or whatever so you know it's not only me doing my thing it's uh encouragement as well to say hey you can do it i mean dude i am a high school graduate i graduated with a 71 i was in basic math as a junior and a senior barely passed math with a 71 to graduate high school zero education okay I'm, I'm as low on the totem pole as they get when it comes to education and look look at look at this look look you see all this 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 is encouragement saying that you don't have to be a scholar to be able to do this God gave you an imagination he gave you a mind it's uh, up to you whether you choose to use it or not and how you use it and the things you can sit around and dream up and bring them to life on a piece of dirt remember it wasn't too long ago this was all dirt and now it's a it's a lush stand of, of bluegrass that looks like a doggone baseball field like a major league park i'm a little in awe myself you know what i'm saying so you can do stuff like this okay it's not just me showing you to say who look what i'm doing it's some encouragement behind it as well saying you have the same opportunity i have we live in the 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 greatest country in the world hands down even with all the evil and all the hurt and all the pain and the suffering that like this family in Texas just went through where kids were brutally murdered that is Satan at his core doing his dirty work on earth even in the midst of all that and I know some of you might disagree with me and that's completely fine I, I don't mind if you disagree with me we still in live we still live in the greatest country in the world because of the opportunities we have i am a perfect living breathing example of that 
please pray for those families and of those kids. I mean, that's that is that's beyond. I don't even have words for it. You can say, yeah, our thoughts and prayers are with you and that kind of thing, but I just that that is that's tragic. And the only thing I can think about is my kids being at school and something like that happening to my kids. I just I don't. I don't know, I don't know how I would react, but absolutely, God is a God of peace and a God of comfort. Okay, sin is why we have those tragedies. Satan is alive and well. He gets in the heart of man and corrupts man and tricks and tempts man to go do those things. But God is still a God of peace and a God of comfort. Why God allows things to happen like that the only answer I can possibly give you is because sin is still here. Your heart, my heart, that shooter's heart are all burdened with the, the, the curse of sin where we can't live up to a holy God standard. And sometimes it, it overwhelms people and people do bad things. And, uh, you know, pray for them. Pray for them, because God, if anybody, God can give them the comfort and the peace and the strength to get through something like this. Only God can do that. You can go pat those people on the back all you want, but God is the only, the only being that can give that kind of strength and comfort to help folks deal with something like that. So, sorry, I got on, I got off on a rant. <laughs> Sorry I got off on a rant. I've just had those kids and those families on my mind all day. And um, things like that really, really bother me. So uh, I guess I'm gonna close it. No, I can't close the video out. <laughs> I gotta come back uh, Saturday morning and we'll set, it, set all the bases up. So uh, I'll see you Saturday morning. Bye. Let me say this, I can't let this go because a brother of mine uh, come by the shop the other day. I mean, we had a great talk out in the parking lot and we were quoting scripture to each other and uh, comforting each other, reminding us how good God is. And Jesus said, and, and th this is kind of the end game, the end game. Seen that movie Avengers, the end game? Well, this is the end game when Christ says it's the end game is he said jesus said behold i go and prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i'm going to come back so that where i am i'm going to receive you into myself and where i am you may be also and that is christ saying i'm coming back to get my church i'm coming back that's what that's what that's the words of jesus and the last few words of that verse is wraps all that up it sums it up and, and validates it jesus said and if it were not so i would have told you meaning jesus said that's my word that's my promise that is my sovereign word that if it were going to be different i would have told you but it's not going to be different and when christ comes back in the sky is split. He's not coming back to be your buddy. He's coming back to make this world right. He is going to defeat sin once and for all. And Satan will be no more. You have a choice to make with your life. See, Jesus was either one of two things. He was either the greatest liar in the history of mankind. Okay, all the claims that Christ made, you know, I'm God, where, you, where God is, I am. It's, it's the miracles in the Bible where, where Jesus heals the sick, the, lion, the, the lame, uh, the people who can't walk, the blind. When Jesus hung on the cross and he died, and three days later he supernaturally rose himself from the grave. All those are claims in the Bible. Either the Bible is true and Christ is exactly who he says he is. 
or he's the biggest liar in the history of mankind. I can't think of anybody, I don't know of anybody that's ever made those claims, that ever claimed to be God, had the power of God, could supernaturally do things. Nobody's ever said that. So your choice right now today is you either believe that Jesus Christ is the biggest liar in the history of mankind or he is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father except through me. That's what Christ said. You either got to believe one of the two. It is what it is. I hope you get your heart right. So we got an insane amount of rain overnight last night. I was actually mowing my fescue and I felt a few raindrops and all of a sudden the bottom fell out. And I grabbed my oldest son, Elijah, and I we in a dead sprint come out here and got these tarps put down. So this is the next day about noon on Friday, tomorrow's game day, and I am extremely nervous to unveil this tarp or pull this tarp back because um, I don't know if there's any smearing or smudging or anything like that and I've worked quite hard out here prepping for this day and obviously you don't want none of your work to be ruined so uh, we're gonna pull it off for the first time together and see what it looks like. Whew. Oh man, thank you Lord. Looks good to me. I'll go do the other one and uh, hope for the best on that one too. Right about there. 160 on this one, right? I'm not going to lie, I'm ready for the painting to begin. Put it right beside it. <laughs> I don't have a shoe for it. Maybe it's not. No, that shoe work bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm gonna climb on top of that flagpole and jump off head first. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Cut! Stay in the morning, boy. <laughs> Alright, so give me, let's take your drone up there and we'll all look at it and see how even it is. Alright, so what we're going to do is take the drone up and... That's like your finger fell. Uh, I don't think it would cut your finger off, but it would hurt. We're going to take the drone up and see what the infield looks like. Okay, that's too rainbowy. Yeah, it is rainbow, isn't it? That, yeah. Uh, corners need to go out. That really don't look right. What now? What are you saying now? The corners need to go back, so it looks more like a circle, not a rainbow. Well, this hose is curled up, so. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I said so. We need to. We need to go more like eight back. eight yeah. foot on the on the corners on the baselines. The, the middle looks to go just the out the outsides. All right, so we're. Hopefully you can see that right there, but we're gonna make some adjustments and then check it again. All right, so we're gonna go back up in the air again and check it. Guys, y'all come in and look. That's kind of what we're working with right there. I think that looks a lot better than it did. Just that little bit of movement. What do you think? The one part? Yeah. Do you know what we're looking at, Jay? Yeah, that. I, you don't know what we're looking at though. We're looking at we're looking at the infield to see if how the infield it looks a little better. So it's gonna be painted like the whole thing. The dirt, the dirt. All right, I got it. 
All right, so see how we compare it, compare it to this one. Though. I'm telling you, we're still, I still think we're off. Look at it. Look at the difference. needs to go back. I think it does need to go back. But like, and leave that, leave that. Oops, what did I just Yeah, do? leave the move top, the, but just leave, move, move. That, move the outsides move the out, the outside like, outside out. Some Move them some more. Not, maybe not. And then I actually maybe bring the second base in just a little bit. What about bring the bring the second base? Cause you ain't got so I ain't got so much base. paint. Then you have to the bigger base. you make it, the more paint let's I got. Just, let's have. Just bring them all in. So bring second base in. Bring second the, base in and leave them where they're at right. and see what that looks like. So the wind is not my friend right now. It's just a little tiny slight breeze and it's kind of jacking up things. But the good thing is I'm looking at my paint over there. I think I got a gracious amount of paint. So I can probably go over it two times and really make it look nice. All right, so one thing I am noticing, I'm getting in a little bit of a hurry. I'm starting to rush, so I'm gonna take a minute and chill and collect my thoughts, I reckon. Uh, my lines aren't perfectly straight and I cannot tolerate that. They have to be perfectly straight. So I'm gonna get my cardboard out and take my time on the base lines between first and second, second, third. And by the way, today is uh, Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday, the game day. So this was really a last minute uh, decision to do this. So I think it's to be a pretty cool touch. That's pretty cool. So coming down to the stretch, it is about uh, 7.50, almost 8 o'clock, so been at it all afternoon since about 1 o'clock or so, and I'm just basically just tightening up the edges. This uh, dirt area that kind of circles around the bases, I think I'm going to go back and make that a little bit bigger. I think that'll look better if it's a little bit bigger. long day um, I, I think it looks incredible absolutely incredible a lot of hard work has went into this and a lot of super long hours working on it and uh, you know when I get tired I just think about obviously my kids being out here and all the kids in the neighborhood being out here and that kind of you know the, the smile on their faces and 
seeing them light up when they get to play on the field, that's kind of what's driving me behind all this. So I am absolutely stoked. I am pumped to for the kids to see all this and get to play on it. You know, another thing about this is kind of a bucket list type thing for me is I've always wanted to at least experience working on a grounds crew like for a major league baseball team that uh, you know I've just kind of always had that dream and uh, this has really really uh, fulfilled that for me to a certain extent I'd still love to work on a major league baseball field but uh, this has really really helped me with that particular area of that bucket list I wanted to do so um, again this is a you know like up close and personal video detailed how you how you do how I'm doing all this and I don't I don't want you to miss out on any detail and uh, uh, anytime I do something like this or you know any, any anytime we have an, an event a big event something like that you know we always want to give God uh, the honor and the glory for it and because you know after all he's the one that has given me the body uh, to do this and the mind to create this and, and have a creativity to be able to do this so um, uh, I just I want to take a minute and, and give him honor right now uh, Father God Lord thank you for this day for life for loving me uh, for saving my soul I ask God you forgive me for the things that I do I know I shouldn't do and the things that I just have no clue and I'm still in disobedience to you uh, have mercy on me and forgive me of that. God, I just pray, Lord, that uh, the people that see this field, the kids that see this field, the parents that look at this field, that have, have them not to look at me. Don't, don't let them see me. I want them to see you, Lord, to see uh, just a normal guy who you have given creativity to and you've given a strong body to. Uh, so that I can do this kind of thing. Uh, Lord, be, honor, be honored and glorified in every single thing that happens uh, to do with the video, to do with the kids playing, the birthday party. Uh, I want you to receive honor and glory. I want people to see you. Thank you, Father, for being so good. In Jesus' name, amen. So, it is Bean 30. I am ready to eat. My belly growleth. And um, I'll be back out here bright and early tomorrow morning to. It's my shooting fireworks. To paint the baselines. Uh, I've got to put the bases out. And I've got to put the pitching rubber in and home plate. And uh, that will really won't take a long time. I've already got the bases stobbed out uh, with nails where they go so i'll be able to place them in the exact location uh we kind of pre-did all that with the string and all and i just painted right over top of it um because there's no way in the world if i would have pulled that string up and those nails there's no way i know where the bases would go so i will be back out here in the morning to finish this up and we'll wrap this really really long video up So we're sitting here, getting ready to watch some TV. <laughs> there was zero chance of rain tonight, none whatsoever. And all of a sudden, it is pouring down rain. That's a big goof. So the only thing, I don't have tarps to cover everything. So uh, it is literally pouring down rain right now. So, we'll just have to hope and pray for the best and maybe the uh, paint won't wash off. I guess we'll have to get up in the morning and check it out. And you have to spray it. Huh? And it's spraying. Well, there's nothing we can do, but it's, uh, I don't have enough tarps to cover everything. So, well, it is what it is. It is, what it is. All right, so here we are the next morning. I'm a little bit nervous, but from back here it actually don't look like it's been affected 
I do need to cut this vine out today. Some kind of vine growing in my cryptomeria. Oh man, thank goodness. Good paint is all I can say. So here's the pitching rubber. <clears throat> I got it off Amazon. It's got these spikes that kind of screw in right there. Uh, I think I paid like $21, $24 for it maybe. But you can hear just how wet it is. But the game isn't until 4 o'clock today and I'm not going to allow anyone on the field until then. So it should be good to go. So I've got all of the uh, nails up. I used a bunch of little nails, put, you know, putting them here and there to mark things out and attach my string to so I've double checked and triple checked that and all of that stuff is up and I left the third baseline string and the first baseline string so now I can paint those lines and then we'll set the bases and we'll be ready to play ball. I think what I'm going to do is let that first coat dry and I'm actually hit it with a second coating just to really brighten up those foul lines. Those of you that work with your hands and do like trade work or something like that, this is kind of that moment to where you can sense the satisfaction of a completed job is right around the corner. And um, I've had a lot of fun with this. And I'm actually ready for it to be over, uh, meaning the work part on it. It's been a whole lot of work. I think I've put, to give you like a rough estimate, um, not including any of the mowing and prep work, not, no mowing included. I've got about 30, 36 hours, 30, 32 to 36 hours wrapped up in this field. So, you know, kind of ready for it to be over and be done but at the same time I'm absolutely enjoying myself right now in this moment because I know that uh, I will I'm just about to complete the job play ball right That's impressive. well I appreciate it man impressive. we got a big puffer ball game today and really? birthday party and all kind of stuff. Four o'clock today. If you you want to bring kids over or whatever, you're more than welcome Four to. Clock. Yes, sir. All right. I'll let them know. We've we've told quite a few people, so I have no idea how many people is <laughs> that. I mean, it might be 200 people out here. I don't know. Yeah. We'll we'll see what happens at four. Oh, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do here is just uh, paint out home plate, and this is strictly for some of the drone shots I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to get a boat load of drone footage because it just looks the most impressive from the air uh, of course you know i got that big mat we're gonna put down to hit on so i don't turn my grass up but for now i'm gonna paint it with uh 
spray paint just for the aerial shots. That's probably a little big for home plate, but it'll have to work. So the bases, I got them off of Amazon. I think I got all three of them for like 60 bucks maybe. Cham Pro. It's got these little rubber pegs. I really, really, really wish I would have got one that maybe had spikes in it or something that would lock it down but uh that's what i got so that's what i'm gonna work with you can see i left the two nails out there to line this up so we're gonna set the bases and wow i think it'll be done I just cannot tell you how fulfilling this is for me. I just, I can't, I'm kind of, kind of having trouble with my words right now. So I reckon if you've made it this far, um, you really did want to see all the detail. This has been incredibly rewarding for me. Um, I think I accomplished a few things. Uh, my goals that I had set out to accomplish and one is I just, the kids are going to love this. I, I could already see the look on my kids face when they were kind of helping me and watching their eyes light up and the emotion, the raw emotion that kind of comes out of them, that excitement that they get. And I can only imagine what that times 50, 60, 70 kids, however many kids come, uh, just being able to, to watch that and in, enjoy that and soak that in so that they get to play on something that is remarkably close to a major league ballpark and again it's my backyard okay we have to keep it in context you got to let me dream a little bit uh and you got to let the kids dream a little bit uh god gave them an incredible imagination i used to sit around dreaming about playing major league baseball and of course that never happened but this is just kind of one of the ways it ties into that if that makes any sense and there's no doubt in my mind that some of these kids will have those same goals and same aspirations and same dreams in life and maybe this right here might even help a talented athlete a young kid that, that actually can play pro ball and they get a little taste of it right here and maybe they're just not the go-getter and want to practice hard and all that and this might motivate them to do that so you just, you just never know you absolutely never know how you're going to affect especially a child you know their, their minds are soft right now and uh, you can mold them uh, how you choose um, so hopefully this right here's a positive impact on some child today and as part of uh, the whole experience for the kids and just kind of out of tradition uh, we're, when we get the teams picked, we're going to line a team up down first baseline, down third baseline. We're going to play the national anthem. And uh, just to kind of complete the experience of, you know, trying to make the kids feel like they're on a real ballpark. And uh, that is incredibly important to me. Uh, 
uh, inc I take that I take the respect toward the flag in our country and our uh, veterans uh, folks that have died in the line of duty uh, in service to to further our freedom as Americans and not only that the, the men and women who currently serve and protect us on a day in and day out basis you know, we live in the greatest country in the world I've said that already and I will continue to say that and uh, so uh, these kids when they line up I'll give them a little quick pep talk uh, you know we're out here in the backyard playing but for that 30 seconds or so that that national anthem is playing uh, I take that incredibly serious incredibly serious and the kids will as well and I hope to that that will you know instill in them further uh, a certain level of respect that I have for the flag and they should have for the flag and our country as a whole and of course I can knock this off my bucket list of getting to work on a major league baseball field this is kind of gonna be it maybe we'll just kind of see what the future holds but I have cannot tell you how much I have enjoyed this I have absolutely had a blast it is no doubt a lot of hard work but I have had so much fun like childlike raw fun doing this it is absolutely incredible I can't wait for my dad to see it my dad's coming over and uh, to you know for Jax's birthday and I, I'm I am excited I mean I'm like a 10 year old <laughs> wanting to show my dad a new toy I, I am so pumped up to show him this I can't I can't even stand it. and of course uh, I want you to be encouraged um, motivated I'm not saying that you got to go out and build a wolf ball field in your backyard. Uh, you know, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying, if you're an American and you live in America, uh, you and I have opportunity. Meaning, there's not much in our country that you can't do. Okay, if you if you set your mind to it, if you work hard, you earn you the money to be able to pay for whatever it is you set your mind to, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. I'm a, again, I've said this a million times, but I'm gonna remind you again. I'm just a high school graduate with no crazy education. And uh, I make a very good living. God has blessed me financially very uh, well. And I, I get to do stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? Let that, let that soak in that you have the exact same opportunity I have had okay I didn't, I didn't I wasn't born in a, a, a rich family I grew up on a farm uh, my dad was a carpenter my mom worked a public job at a factory uh, I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth growing up I wasn't that kid I wasn't the rich kid on the block my mom and dad worked hard blue-collar workers just like myself tradesman my dad's a tradesman the carpenter uses his hands just like I use my hand in the dirt you have that same opportunity nothing was handed to me nothing was given to me yes I've been blessed by, by God Almighty but at the same time I have busted my tail I have worked my hands off I have worked so incredibly hard over my career to be able to you know make money save money and better do crazy and wild things like this so there are no excuses I don't do excuses I don't I don't make excuses and I don't accept them so if you are that person that is kind of down on your luck and yeah you know, uh, nothing goes right my way hey go deliver pizza at night I used to do that. I used to work a second job at night just to be able to make the money to pay the bills and hustle, okay? I don't take no for an answer. So use that, use my drive and my motivation and, and let it sink into you and, and go out there and get it done. Man, you live in America, man. You can do anything. So let this be encouragement to you and motivation to you so that you can live out your dreams just like I'm living out mine.
and of course last but not least I told you in several videos ago I was gonna turn this into a wolf and ball field I wanted to honor my word so there you go I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have and as always I absolutely appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch I'll check you later